Before we get into it, Melbourne Comedy Festival starts this weekend, Friday and Saturday, loosebeers.com. Get your tickets. I want to see you there. It's Friday, Saturday, then next Friday and Saturday. Then I'm going to Sydney in uh, May. And then we got Newcastle, Port Macquarie, Gold Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warnable, and Shepparton. Loosebeers.com. Get your tickets now. I want to see you there. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 331 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. And look, in two episodes, it's going to be episode 333, okay? And that is an angel number, as I've been told by many women with with, uh, colored hair and mental illnesses. It's an angel number, and it's all about manifesting. So I think that over this episode and the next episode, we really need to start thinking as a community, about manifesting. And what are we going to manifest with this show, okay? Because basically anything that we talk about in episode 333 will come true. It will happen because it's an angel number. And as I've been told by the the witch community on TikTok, it's the, it's the number of manifestation. Anything that you want to manifest, Keelan? Money. Money? Money. Ma- money! Don't don't say that right now. Save that for, for a couple episodes time. Uh, me, I would like to manifest having no braces. Okay, I would like that to happen. Um, mainly so that I can stop spitting on the front row when I'm performing. Come and see me live, loosebeers.com. Ad, uh, Perth got a spray, but Melbourne, Adelaide, Sydney, Brisbane, you won't. <laughs> um, I went... A lot of people saw my post on Instagram and uh, immediately the response was, we can't wait to hear about this on the podcast. I went to a gay bar last weekend. I went to a gay bar because I've got a gay mate. I've made a new friend and he happens to be a gay mate. And he said to me, I think you would have a lot of fun at a gay bar. And I said to him, are you trying to convert me? And then he said, no. Now me... I made, I made two friends recently. Can't talk about it. You'll find out in a couple months. But I made two friends. One of them straight. The other one's gay. Made a gay mate. What do you do with your gay mate? You jokingly suggest that we go to Poof Doof. He says, oh my God, that would be so fun. And then you go to Poof Doof. If you don't know, Poof Doof is, <laughs> is, is not a slur. It's the name of an actual gay bar on Chapel Street, South Yarra in Melbourne. All right? And I went there. And do you, do you want to know what happened? Do you want to know what happened when I walked into a gay bar? I had a fucking great time. It was good. It was so much fun. I went to a gay bar with my gay mates surrounded by the gays and I've, I don't think I've ever had more fun at a nightclub. They're great. The gays know how to do it. Let me tell you, the music was better. The fashion was better. Everyone was in a better mood. Everyone was having much more fun. It was actually way less sexual and gross than the straights and their their fucking nightclubs. All right? There was... You know what the the biggest difference I noticed about being at a gay club versus being at a straight club? Yuck. Everyone smiles at you. I feel like not even... uh, I feel like I felt like a, you know I felt like I felt like a really pretty girl. <laughs> Cause here's the thing. When you go to a nightclub for the straights, boring, boo, never going back. All right. It's like you go in with your group of friends and you will maybe attempt to talk to a girl and begrudgingly also talk to her friends while they basically grill you as they should and try to prove whether or not you're a creep to keep their friends safe. When you're at the gay club, there's none of that. Everyone's just happy and smiley. Everyone assumes the best intentions of you. Have you ever, like as a, 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 when you're in a straight nightclub, yuck, have you ever looked at a girl and have her smile immediately? I don't think it's ever happened. You might get like, Kind of an inquisitive smirk if she finds you attractive and she's there to maybe get hit on for a little ego boost and a free drink. And then in the very, very, very unlikely rare scenario, you might be able to get her Instagram and then she'll ghost you. 
That's the best case scenario for a straight nightclub yuck boring. Dude, and, and then, God forbid you make eye contact with a man at a straight nightclub. If you're a dude, you look at a, you look at a guy at a nightclub, now you're going to fight. <laughs> you know? Have you ever looked at a stranger you haven't met in a nightclub and not felt like this undercurrent threat of violence? No. Never. I don't think a man has ever made friends with a man at a nightclub. Never happened. They've made enemies. That's the big difference as well. There was no, no threat of violence. Because at nightclubs, for straights, yuck, boring, there's usually no violence. But you can feel everyone making sure that there's no violence, right? There's a bunch of men keeping their most dickhead friend away from the other men. And then there are bouncers that are the scariest looking dudes you've ever seen in your life. Just now talking about this, I'm now realizing I don't think I saw a single security guard at Puff Duff because they weren't needed. Even when dudes go with their girlfriends, there's like this whole thing of like, I've got to protect my girlfriend from predator men, as they should. And that starts fights. Big thing I noticed at Puff Duff, the best club in Melbourne, we bumped into this gay couple, right? So it's it's me, another straight, and a gay. And we're having a boogie. We're having a dance, right? First thing I noticed immediately is how friendly everyone is to me. I'm like, oh, this is lovely. This is really nice. Then we bump into uh, a gay couple that our gay knew. And they get talking. And uh, I meet the, the new gay and he goes, this is my husband. And I go, hey, mate, how you going? Shake his hand. And then we're all dancing. Husband takes his shirt off and goes upstairs, <laughs> leaving his husband alone. And that's the thing I noticed. There's no jealousy at the gay clubs. There's no jealousy and there's no, hey, that's mine. None of that. Which happens at every straight nightclub. Boo, boring. Let's go to Revs. Why? So you can overdose and get king hit? No, fuck that. Go to Poof Doof and have like a boogie with a bunch of dudes having a lot of fun. And then like one lesbian who's there with a girl that's definitely straight. And then six drag queens. Who, by the way, all the drag queens were my height. It's the, the least tall I've ever felt was at Puff Doof because there were a couple of 6'4 drag queens that were wearing six inch heels. They're fucking taller than me. I'm looking at these men. What pronouns do you use for a drag queen? When they're in costume, is it, it's, I guess it depends. If they're in costume, do I call you, excuse me, miss? I Fuck, think- I wish I asked a drag queen. I could have done a survey. We have to go back. Sorry, Keelan. We're going back. <laughs> I'll, I'll come. Dude, it, honestly, it was so fun. You got to go to a gay club. And it was so respectful. That's another thing, right? I was, you know, going in there. I'm a straight. All right? I may dress like one of them, but I'm not. <laughs> but I am an ally, you know? So I went there and I was thinking, all right, I'm going to have to like, I'm just going to be, because I know I was expecting that, that I would be like uh, a woman at a straight nightclub, right? Where I would have to be on high, I, I met her fun, but I would also unfortunately have to be on high alert. I'd have to be mindful of who's dancing behind me. I'd have to ward off potential advances, right? But there was none of that. Okay, there were quite a few advances that I had to politely decline, but there was no weird shit, no touching, no dancing, nothing. Everyone was super respectful. And I think it's because no one in there is desperate because everyone in there is fucking. Like, that's the thing. I feel like that undercurrent of violence comes from, like, toxic men who are desperate to get pussy, Desperate to like prove that they're a real tough alpha male 
and uh, very jealous or protective of what little pussy is available to them. So they might be talking to a girl they've just met and then another guy will talk to them and now it's a fight. Or that won't even happen. They'll be talking to a girl, another guy will make eye contact with him. All of a sudden he's like, I have to prove my, my manhood to this bloke. Now they're fighting. Whereas I went to the gay club, I met two husbands, they separated. About an hour later, I see them both kissing random men. That's the biggest difference, is that at the gay club, everyone in there was like, oh, well, you know, like, like you know, we could all just have sex. <laughs> that's what it is. Like, that's, I'd say that's the biggest difference between the gay club and the straight club is um, everyone at the gay club, if they leave without getting laid, that was a decision that they made for themselves. <laughs> Whereas everyone leaving the straight club, leaving without any sex, that's not a decision that they made. That's a reality that they were forced to accept. And some of them are rattling in their cage. I need some pussy. I need validation. I thought it was cocaine. It's actually meth. That's the difference, right? <laughs> Here's the thing though. What was really funny as well is uh, I got hit on a lot because... I know what I look like, and I look like I should be at Puff Doof. And in their defense, I was at Puff Doof. And I was there with a with a very straight man who also looks very gay. So we were just fending off people so much that we just said that we were in a relationship. And then we were met every single time. So I, 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 he will role play. You be me. All right. I'll be I'll be one of the uh, I'll be one of the gays. Okay. Hey, man. Hey. Do you want to dance? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Oh, how come? Oh, I'm straight. Okay. Well, you've messed up the role play. You have to go. Oh. No, I, this, is my, this is my boyfriend. Oh, sorry. I'm here with my boyfriend. Sorry. Okay, sorry, let's sorry. start again. Reset. Reset. All right. Uh, also, pretend I'm a, I'm a six foot seven drag queen. Okay. Hey, cutie. Hey. Do you want to dance? Uh, no, that's okay. Why I'm, not? I'm here with my boyfriend. So? Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it went every time. Is we would go, oh, this is my boyfriend. And they'd be like, yeah? Do you all want to dance? Monogamy is not a thing at Puff Doof. It's not real. You know? We uh we were we were there dancing and uh that yeah, that's the that's that's the other difference is fuck, I've never been smiled at more, right? Obviously by the gay men, I understand that, alright? I'm a man. I understand their motivations, but you know what? What almost tripped me into another dimension? Like I, I actually felt like I was dreaming. I felt like I wasn't in reality anymore. Was me, the straight and the gay? We're all dancing. We're in the middle of the dance floor, having a great time. Those gay DJs, their playlist do poos all over the other Melbourne DJs that are just playing fucking TikTok hits. All right, no, fuck you. Play some Madonna fused with funk. That's a fucking track. All right. We're in the middle of the D floor, two straights and a gay. And then a group next to us is like six definitely uh, straight women. Maybe they write bi in their, in their Instagram bio, but you can tell by what they're wearing. It's just a bunch of straight girls having fun. All right. And I bumped into one of the girls accidentally. Now, I'm, I'm well-trained in straight club manners. So I bumped into her accidentally. I turn around and I go, I'm so sorry. And then she looked at me and she smiled. And then she grabbed me by the hand and invited her me into their dance circle. And then we all started dancing together. And all of the girls were really happy that I was there. If that was a straight nightclub, they would have spat on me and I would have gone, thank you so much, Queens. I deserve that. Sorry. That's the experience of a straight male in a straight nightclub is you make eye contact with a girl and if she's with one of her fat friends, they beat you to death. (laughs) 
But because... I was at Puff Doof, they assumed that I was a gay, and then they assumed that I wasn't a threat. Big mistake. Isn't that, isn't that just a big, um, a big revealing reminder of, um, how fucking dangerous it is for a woman to just leave her house? That I'm like, oh my God, a woman smiled at me at a nightclub. It's like, yeah, (laughs) because... Because the last time she smiled at a boy in a straight club, he followed her home. <laughs> what else happened? We're dancing. Oh, that's right. They know how. They just know how to run an event. So the music's pumping. We're having a huge boogie. We're dancing. It's good fun. People are playing dress up. I'm seeing a few police officers in leather. A couple of cowboys. And then all of a sudden... Five drag queens just get on stage and they start doing choreographed dance, flips, fireworks, pyrotechnics, cartwheels. I thought, fuck, am I in a library? I thought that's the only place that drag queens perform. But apparently they also headline Puff Doof. Is this episode going to get demonetized because I keep saying Puff Doof? YouTube, it's the name of the bar. P word Doof. Fuck, it was fun. You got to go to a gay bar. I'm telling you, it's excellent. Although there was one thing that I, that I wasn't a big fan of. All right. Um, Every time uh, now gay people, they're known for their humor. Obviously they're very funny people. They're very silly people as a community. They've been through a lot and they, and they, and they cope through humor and they love to make each other laugh. Cause at the end of the day, as gay as they are, they're also the fucking boys. All right. And the fucking boys know how to do banter. All right. Now, the first time I told a guy who approached me that I was actually straight and I'm here with my, with my gay, he went, that's fine, sweetie. And then went, what's your drink? And I went, ah, it's a good one. That happened eight times. <laughs> Eight times in a row, every single dude that approached me made like these little hand motions over my drink, like, oh, you better watch out. And oh, would you and I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I get it. So, uh, so after about the fifth one, I was like, I reckon I'm going to be on bottled water for the rest of the night, lid on. But other than that, it was good fun. I got really sweaty. I blacked out for six hours, woke up in some guy's couch. It was good. <laughs> no, I didn't. You know, this other, what, what was also funny as well is uh, me and the straight with our gay, we kind of went in there with like, we went in there with straight mentality of like, when you go, when you go to a nightclub with your single mate and if you, you're in a relationship, you're like, all right, I'm going to be the wingman unless you're a piece of shit. All right? Because some dudes with girlfriends hate their girlfriends and they go they go out with their single friend and they go oh, I'm actually going to stop you from enjoying anything and talking to women because I hate mine and it's like brother break up with her or don't go out um but you have to learn the art of the wingman now that's the mentality that me and the straight went in with our gay and uh we were talking to him we're like man you're not making any moves. What's going on? And he goes, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? You said you wanted to like maybe meet someone and we're like here to kind of assist you. And he goes, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah. And he, he looks around and he goes, oh, that guy's cute. And I go, I walk up to the guy and I go, hey man, uh, my friend thinks you're cute. And he goes, oh, really? And they just start kissing. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And then I remembered that I was at Puff Doof. Wingman is not... I wasn't a wingman. I was more of a messenger. <laughs> it's just very different. You know, there is... um, There is something very funny, though, about... I thought I thought for sure that there would be a few people that would be, that would be a bit like, uh, ah, get out, this is our space. But every dude was stoked that we were there, which was cool. Um... Although I did, you know what I did notice? The behavior 
between the gays and the straight women was disgusting. <laughs> it was absolutely disgusting and I'm taking a stand right now, okay? The, the things that these straight women were letting their gays do to them was obscene. There was a woman in there that was, no joke, she was 6'4". She was fucking giant. She was beautiful, all right? And uh, and she was, um, how do I put this delicately? She was, uh, she could have showed up with no makeup on and, and I would have gone, that's a chick. <laughs> she was... She was organic, is what I'm saying. Born as, right? And but she's six four, and there was she was there with this like five foot seven gay dude, and they're dancing, and me and her make eye contact because we're we're over the top of everyone else's head, and I smile at her, she smiles at me, and then the the little the little gay that was with her, um, just starts dancing, and then she she grabs him by the neck. And starts choking him and then he's really into it. And then he gets on his knees and opens his mouth and she puts three fingers down the back of his throat. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I just watched three men kiss and that was less strange. (laughs) And then there was another gay and a straight woman, right? And they're dancing And then the straight woman bends over and the gay guy grabs her by the waist and just starts slamming into her, like really violently. Really hard, just simulating doggy style on the dance floor. Never seen that in my life in a straight club. I've only ever seen that during sex. (laughs) Like it was just that with clothes. And I was just thinking, I was just watching that. I was going, fuck. If I did that to um, to a gay, I feel like I would get, like I was watching this, I was going, there's no way that guy's fully gay. Is that a thing? I've never seen two women do that to each other. There's something about, what well, that's the biggest thing I noticed, with the, the straight women and the gay men, there's something about them that just make them want to simulate fucking and then go, just kidding, I'm gay. And she's like, oh, yeah, you know, which doesn't make sense because I was there with a male gay and we didn't (laughs) simulate a blowjob on the dance floor. It's just a fascinating cultural difference. (laughs) You know what else was disappointing, though? You know what was really disappointing? This is on Chapel Street, right? I think it was a Saturday night. We're there at like 11.30 p.m. Oh, did you go to the Taco Bell on Chapel Street? Yeah, I did go to the Taco Bell. Did you Bell. actually? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. We passed it. Good good joint. Um, we went to a few bars beforehand, right? Just to, just to even out, you know? We're going to Puff Doof. We're going to a couple of straight bars first, right? So me, the straight and the gay, we go to, we go to a few different bars. And at every single bar... Fans left and right. Lewis, love your stuff. Oh man, how are you going? Oh, I've, I've just, I love the new chin. When do you get the braces off? Like real locked in, currently watching my stuff, engaged fans. If I met you that night, love you. Took a bunch of photos. It would have to be with dozens of people on our way there. We were at this one bar. Guy brought us a round of drinks and there were a rum and cokes and there were definitely double shots. And he very politely talked to us for about five minutes and then left us alone to enjoy our drinks. And I didn't have to tell him that I don't drink. So his feelings didn't get hurt. And then we gave them all to our straight mate and he got way too pissed. Good laugh, right? So, so many fans all over Chapel Street. I get to Puff Doof, not one. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my gay fans? I'm disappointed in you fucking losers. You're at the house? Oh, you're always at my show. Oh, we'll come and see the show. What? Get on the fucking dance floor and poofed off. Where are you? You bunch of boring dorks. You're telling me that you've got the best nightclub in the country and it's for you and you're not going? 
Get down and poofed off, you queers. Have a good time. Don't feel out of place. <laughs> like me. That's I, that that I reckon is I think the biggest secret that uh, that the gays are trying to keep from the straight women is that uh, is that gay bar, gay bars and clubs might be the the only genuinely safe place for women <laughs> on like a Friday and a Saturday night, and the gays are like don't fucking tell your friends we don't want you here. Um. So yeah, that's that's what happened. Oh, also, they had a cage. You ever see those cages at nightclubs? They have them very sparingly at straight nightclubs and they're always full of women. Boo! And if you, a man, got in the cage, you would be an obnoxious asshole. You know what? Not at Puff Duff. You get in the cage, everyone cheers and claps. <laughs> everyone cheers and claps. It was great. I, I really felt like a pretty girl at a nightclub. There were no rules. At a nightclub, if a girl gets on the table, she can go, woo! She can do a few spins. She can spill the drink fucking everywhere, kick over someone else's drink, and nothing happens. If a guy gets on the table, the, the biggest islander you've ever seen will take his front teeth and kick him out, throw him on the curb. Six Tongans will dismantle you piece by piece. Not so at Puffed Off. There isn't even a security guard. They're not needed. You can get on a table, do a boogie, and everyone claps and cheers. It's beautiful. So yeah, that's that's it, man. That's uh, that's uh, I highly recommend gay clubs, but I but I also feel like uh, you should only go with a gay friend because otherwise uh, you're probably intruding. <laughs> In, you know, it's it's gay or invite only. That's it. Straight women tolerate it. <laughs> that's, that's another thing that I just kept seeing was just like uh, every now and then a lone gay woman would approach a group of six quite clearly straight women, talk to them and then just walk away and you could just see them going, fucking straights, what are they fucking doing here? Come to a fucking gay bar and I hit on you and you turn me down, what the fuck? So that's what I think. You got to go to Puff Dorf, man. It's a fucking laugh. Should we go? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Keelan was actually bummed that he wasn't invited. As soon as I was there, he's like, man, this was awesome. Yeah. There's that funny video of you dancing that I really liked. It is really good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that's another thing. Took our shirts off too. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> because that's right. Because uh, we were just so baffled by the... The married couple taking their shirts off and then splitting and going off by themselves. Firstly, them leaving each other was like crazy in straight world. Uh, but them men taking their shirts off, I was like, fuck, I didn't even know you could do that. And the the, the other straight goes, oh, do you uh, dare me to take my shirt off? I'm like, I'll do it with you. We did that. And you know who was embarrassed? The gay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it was a laugh. You know that, you know, if I don't know if any of you have like a, have a gay mate who's, who's just so straight presenting that it blows your fucking mind. The cunts are tradey. <laughs> you know, it looked like, uh, it looked like two gays dragged him along to Puff Doof. That's what it looked like. But then he started kissing blokes and it evened up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, gay bars rip. You gotta go with a gay. Uh, or big gay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, speaking of uh, the, of the gays, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> J.K. Rowling is currently testing the limits of free speech in a country that she doesn't even fucking live in. Scotland has passed uh, a law, and I've got a video about this that, that's come out already. Uh, Scotland's passed a law uh, on April 1st of all days, uh, a hate speech law. And a part of that training about the hate speech law, um, basically it adds a bunch of restrictions uh, to speech and a bunch of new laws and a bunch of different ways to police hate crimes. And hate crimes uh, can be defined as ageism, uh, being, being racist, sexist, uh, misgendering, all of those. But it's also ageism. It's also... Uh, 
disabilities. It's also just what people look like. It can even be size as well, I believe, uh, of a person and uh, a bunch of other very restrictive and super broad uh, definitions of what hate speech could or could not be. And that law has come with training from the government that's been sent to the police and has been leaked to the press. And part of that training uh, specifically says that this hate speech can perform, uh, can happen here, can happen in the workplace, can happen online, can happen in real life, or even can happen as part of a performance or a play. So now, obviously, comedians, playwrights, uh, any type of live performer, um, people who do uh, rallies, uh, <laughs> they are all very concerned, mainly the people who do rallies, uh, are about are very concerned that police are going to start targeting live performance. Um, I mean, I know certainly me as a comedian, I do lots of jokes about race. I do lots of jokes about gender, sexuality. I mean, the first fucking half of this podcast was about Puff Doof. And I said the word Puff, you know, am I going to get arrested if I ever land in Scotland? It's all this type of stuff. So this law is passed and it's rolled out. And this police force has committed to investigating every single complaint lodged. Um, and a bunch of people have been very concerned that um, they're going to target live performance. Police Scotland have come out and said, no, 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 we're not going to target live performance. We're not targeting comedians. We're not targeting performers. Uh, however, they are subject to the law. So it's like, okay, so you're going to investigate every single complaint who is the most visible type of person, a performer, a live performer, someone who creates content online, whether it be a podcast or a YouTube video or a fucking song, you know, or a poem. Those are the most visible people. So you would think that most of the complaints are probably about public figures, public performers, right? People with the most eyes to have to, people who have the most ability to subjectively offend a group of people. That's someone with a platform, with a voice, with a stage, right? Um, <clears throat> and Scottish police have come out and they said they've committed to investigating every single complaint, this new unit that's, that's been set up. However, at the same time in Scotland, the, the same police force, different department, are actually trialling a program because they're underfunded and they're understaffed. So they're trialling a program where they actually don't respond to crimes. And we're talking violent crimes, petty theft, bigger thefts, like a bunch of actual fucking physical crimes that happen in reality. They're trialing a program where they don't respond to it. And they've gone, oh, this is actually working really well. Someone calls the cops and goes, someone's stolen my, my child. And they go, all right. And they hang up on them. They go, oh, that's good. If we don't respond to the call, the crime rate goes down. <laughs> and obviously I don't know heaps about that situation because I'm mainly focusing on the free speech thing, but it is such a funny, um, such a funny difference between two departments where one department is going, Oh, we don't even have enough money to, we don't have enough money or police officers to respond to, uh, you know, grandma's getting their wallet stolen. So we're going to let those criminals go, go free and, and, uh, basically give them tacit approval to commit crime as long as it's not filmed. Right. Uh, but if anyone says some naughty words during a fucking Shakespeare play, we might arrest them and we'll investigate every single complaint. So that law is launched. And with that committal to, uh, look at every single complaint, <clears throat> the prime minister of Scotland has been complained about thousands of times. Like the day that the program was launched, the day the reporting program was launched, they pulled up a bunch of things about the guy talking about the hate speech program and referring to white men <laughs> and young men. They've complained about that as hate speech to the department and completely overloaded the complaint system fucking immediately. JK Rowling now comes into the into the play. Sorry, sorry for all of the people who, who love the Puff Doof segment. This segment might annoy you. JK Rowling's come out and she started going... <clears throat> Did you know that trans women are blokes? Thank you very much. I haven't written a good book in a decade. <laughs> <laughs> Arrest me. Arrest me. I'd be so, I'm so brave as to say that trans women are men. 
Regardless of your opinion on the matter, she's annoying, huh? Can we all at least agree on that? That JK Rowling's fucking annoying? Any author that regularly tweets is annoying. Doesn't matter what end of the spectrum they're on. We've got JK Rowling over here going, um, actually, trans women are men and uh, we should ban them from bathrooms. Okay, write a book, bitch. You're a children's author. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we've got Stephen King going, uh, Donald Trump is orange and a cheeto. Shut up, cunt. Well, you still write good books. So I don't know. How, I don't know how the fuck he has the time to write that many amazing, well-written, good books and that many horrible, awful, boring tweets. Uh, Maybe that's the only reason his books are good is because all of the shit stuff he puts out on Twitter. Um... Trump actually has been accused of a crime. Shut up! Write a book! If you follow an author on Twitter, prepare to hate them. Because I used to follow Stephen King. And then one day I was just like, I, I actually won't ever be able to read one of your books again if I read another one of these tweets. I don't care about what a... about what a, a, a woman who wrote a book I enjoyed when I was 12 has to say about <laughs> gender. But she's come out and she said, trans women are men. Arrest me if you dare. And that's been headlines and the, the police commissioner's gone, yeah, we're not going to arrest you. And then J.K. Rowling's gone, ah, vindicated yet again. Mm -hmm. I live to be annoying on Twitter for another day. Shut up! By the way, Dumbledore's gay. Also, Hermione, if she were trans, which she's not, would still be a woman. <laughs> That'll be the next fucking update to Pottermore. She'll be like, uh, uh, Ginny, after having sex with Harry Potter, was so revulsed by the size of his penis, uh, actually decided to, uh, to, uh, to change her gender, but then actually realized that she was being brainwashed by social media, and as soon as she deleted Instagram from her phone... Stopped wanting to be a boy. <laughs> you know, and uh, Dumbledore came back to life and invented a new spell. Gendarus Revealus. Says here, you're a bloke. Get out of my bathroom. Um, so anyway, what I'm here to say is, uh, unfortunately, I agree with J.K. Rowling. I think the law is fucking stupid. Um, I think that these, uh, these, I don't know, hate speech is obviously bad. Bigotry is obviously bad. Racism fucking sucks. Uh, and discriminating people is, uh, is, is, uh, an, obviously an evil thing, um, for traits they can't control. That's gross and it's wrong. Uh, but governments and police forces introducing unbelievably broad, ill-defined laws about speech that that don't even really specify what is and what is not hate speech. They actually, if you read what they've put out, it actually seems to rely more on how the speech is interpreted, which is super fucking dangerous. So it's not even like what I intended when I said it or what I even said. It's how it's heard and how it's understood by a third party who then reports it you know, I kind of, I explained it in my video of like, say I'm doing a joke about race, right? And it's a, it's about a race I'm not a part of. And all of my jokes about races that I'm not a part of are done in a loving way and in a way that I try to understand them. And I go, here's how we're different. And I know how we're different because I actually understand you. And that's funny to me because I'm like this. And that's what a fucking good joke about a different culture, a different gender, or what is it? It's, it's poking fun from a place of understanding because if you didn't understand it, you couldn't make fun of it in a way that would make everyone laugh. Right, But if one person hears this and they're offended and then they have to fucking try and transcribe, write down what they think that I said, which is impossible, even if, even if you liked the joke, it would be impossible for you to remember exactly what I said and write it down how I said it and then also figure out my intention with it. Then that report gets sent off to another fucking person who has to read it sitting in an office with a big sign that says <laughs> hate crime 
probably with a fucking quota of crimes to, to process and people to arrest. You read that, you're in a fucking shit mood. You haven't had lunch. And then he goes, oh, this isn't funny. This is just bigoted. Arrest Lewis Spears. You know, it just uh, seems rife for abuse. Um, Because that's, that's the thing with these laws. It's not necessarily... Um, people are always like, oh, yeah, but, you know, if you don't do anything wrong, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, and that's like, that's like a short-term argument that is... Um, that is like correct for the first six months of the law being introduced. But you think about laws that um, like 10 years after they're written, you know, when the spirit of, of, uh, of the person who came up with the idea is long dead and gone. And then some malicious police officer gets a hold of it because he doesn't like your attitude. And then go, oh, I found this rule that says I can do this for, for vague reasons. And then it gets, that's when that shit gets abused. Um, so, Man, Scotland, I hope you guys uh, are okay. That fucking sucks. That's another thing about Scotland. It's like the, the fucking country of banter. You have something? Yeah, but after you, after you finish this, yeah. It's kind of, that's, I think that's it. Oh. You know those, um, that conjoined twin group, girl, girls? The girl Is this with- a, just a completely different tangent? Yeah. Okay, so when you, you were really like, when I'm done. done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I, you know, I, I think that's, um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Yep. So you know they can join twins? Yeah. One body, two heads? Yeah. Well, they got married recently. Wow. And they've... Uh, so both of them to one bloke? To one bloke. And no, well, one of them to one bloke and the other one just happens to be there. The other one was there. Yeah. <laughs> but does she like him? Yeah, I, I assume so. And I've just sent you a, a, a tweet that they posted. Okay. Or an X. An X. X form what are they called? Story. An X post now. Yeah. For fuck's sake. That guy's an idiot too. So it's a photo of the conjoined twins, Brittany and Abby, yeah. with their new husband. And, okay. and read Brittany's tweet or All Abby's right. tweet. I'm having a look. <clears throat> They're X. He's a handsome looking fella. And uh, they're both there. Brittany and Abby. Oh, they share a social media. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's, uh, that's more simple. Um, Brittany and Abby Hensel. Because everyone is asking, we're just going to tell you, Lo- love this. Yes, I have sex with my husband. Yes, I go down on him. Yes, my sister Brittany is there. Yes, my sister and I orgasm as one. But when I sleep with my husband, she's usually reading a book or listening to a true crime podcast. So she just puts the pleasure out of her mind. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> I've been wanting to know this shit Ever since I heard about conjoined twins, they come as one, but the other one's reading a book. That's, I mean, that's going to make you feel like shit as the, as the guy, right? Because like, uh, that, you know what? That's good. That's going to make you feel like he must have a, a quite a shit personality. They must be, those girls must be really different to each other. Hey, yeah. personality wise. Yeah. But I also thought that they controlled like half of the body each. I think that just depends on how and where they're fused. I think that's true of some, but not of others. Okay. Which is fucking fascinating. So that makes me think that... um, so So does that mean that the other girl would like her own boyfriend? Oh, yeah, true. Jeez, that would make me feel, honestly, like good on them. I'm really happy that they're married and I'm sure they're, and I'm sure they're happy. But that would make me feel like shit as the guy because that would mean that let's say, for, let's say they've been dating for two years. For two years, he hasn't managed to win the other one over. <laughs> so for two years, she's gone, no, I don't care if she makes us come. I don't like him. That's that's fascinating. Yeah. Yes, I go down on him. Yes, my sister Brittany is there. <laughs> yes, my sister and I orgasm as one. But when I sleep with my husband, she's usually reading a book or listening to a true crime podcast. So she just puts the pleasure out of her mind. Jeez, could you could you imagine? Um. Coming halfway through a true crime podcast. <laughs> I wonder, does would that ever okay? 
I'm just trying to... Would what one is listening to make it harder for the other one to come mm. without her knowing why? Because for me to be like in the headspace to orgasm, I need to be there. Like if I was if I was listening and really focusing to a true focusing on a true crime podcast, and that's when <laughs> that's when Thomas burst through the door and murdered the whole family. I probably wouldn't be able to orgasm. You know? It raises a lot of questions, doesn't it? So so then another question, okay? Say I'm the twin having sex and I'm really into it, but for some reason I can't come. Is that because my sister is up to a really good part in her audiobook? <laughs> she's, and she's focusing on that? I'm just looking up whether they what parts of the body they control. Like uh like you know when maybe it's a bit like um have you ever watched Power Rangers? You know when they like when they fuse into the giant robot and like one's got the arm, the other one's got the leg. Each twin manages one side of their conjoined body. <laughs> the sense of touch of each is restricted to her body half. So there is a small amount of okay. overlap in the middle. So Stum- each so, of them yeah, they- have an arm and a leg, but they share a pussy. Yeah. But then if they're doing anything other than missionary, the other one has to help out. <laughs> <laughs> you know... She's probably fucking got a blindfold on, her headphones blaring, you know. Can you, can we do doggy? He wants to do doggy. Oh, I don't want to do doggy. I'm not in the mood. Well, I am. And if you want me to help you drive to work tomorrow, we're doing doggy. I want a thumb in my ass. (laughs) Sorry, our ass. That means What if the other one's gay? Take it a puff of. <laughs> that means that if one of them's giving a blowjob and chokes, the other one feels sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so fuck. That's so funny. I would I don't think I could um I don't think I could uh could have sex with them, not because they're conjoined twins, but because the other one is so clearly not into it. Could you imagine every time you have sex, someone else is there and then they haven't they're having no fun. They actually don't they're actually trying their best to not be there. I'd love to have sex, but my sister isn't turned on right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck. That'd be annoying. It's hard enough when you when when you've got one girlfriend. What if you've got one girlfriend and her sister's always there? <laughs> oh, I'd love to, but she's got a headache. And now now they're fighting. Oh, you've always got a headache when I want to have sex with my boyfriend, but when we want to go to the movies and watch your fucking films that I don't even like, you never have a headache. So I was reading that. They get paid one salary, their school teachers. That's bullshit. But they had to pay for two separate college degrees. That's fucking bullshit. They need two salaries. But but they probably can't do twice as much work because they only have... You know what? That's why we need this Neuralink shit. Put a chip in both their heads. They could both be coders. <laughs> Dude, you, I feel like you, like she put that tweet out and was like, I'm just going to fuck for all of us, you know, not just this two sisters, but for every conjoined twin on earth, I'm going to answer the questions, right? For everyone. But this just raises so many more questions. Does this mean, do you reckon that, I mean, surely, surely that at some point, point every now and then the other one has given it a go like genuinely being like oh well i am in the mood and she's in the mood obviously i can tell because we share a pussy and he's there i might as well try and enjoy it and then she just didn't (sighs) 
man, I want this guy on a fucking podcast. That's what I want. I want this guy and them. One chair, two mics. <laughs> That's actually fucking fascinating. Um, <clears throat> okay. I think uh, we're going to have to end the podcast there, I think. Um, if you uh, if you want to support the show uh, and get early access to every single episode, jump on patreon.com slash Lou Spears and support the show. Uh, a few bucks a month, you get early access, you get a bonus episode every single week and they're bangers. Uh, and we do all of the stuff that um, we we can't do on the year. And we just talked about gay clubs and conjoined twins fucking for an hour. So imagine what we do over there. Um, check that out. The Patreon episode is up right now. The link is below. I'll see you there. And I'll see you at my show in Melbourne uh, next weekend are the first shows. So come and see them. Loosebeers.com. Melbourne Comedy Festival is on. Uh, the shows are filling up right now. So get them now. All right. I'll see you there. And I hope you have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>